from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Grace Lee. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco on Howard Street in the middle of the street in the Cloud Plaza or Cloud Oracle Cloud Plaza, which is the big exhibit here at Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. My co-host Brian Grace Lee, analyst at Wikibon with the cloud. Our next guest is George Saab, Vice President of Development Java Platform at Oracle. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. So 20 years anniversary for uh, Java, we hear it in the, on the behind us. Yep. 20 years, it makes me feel old because Java was a language when I got my hands on it, it was like, wow, this is really amazing, totally big, functional, great language, 20 years in, a lot of new languages, a lot of competition, so to speak, a lot yep. of young developers who have never loaded Unix yep. or Linux. Yep. They just want cloud, they want data. So what's, it, what's, the, what's the 20 year vibe here? What's the theme and what are you guys doing? Yeah, you know, the vibe here is just fantastic. Um, the Java developers are a wonderful set of people. There's just like lots of enthusiasm and people coming both to hear about, you know, the things that have happened in the last 20 years and also looking forward at new development that's being done towards future versions. So Java is one of those languages that you know, a lot of people are using, and certainly, you know, us old guys have loved it. But now the young guns are coming in. They're looking at a lot of real time for like Node.js, a lot of open source is now mainstream. Um, this all built under an open source fabric. How do you talk to that diversity of opportunities? Certainly yeah. this functional diversity, yeah. this, this tool for this job. How do you guys talk about that as, as the new young generation comes in and as software is the center of all the action right now. So yeah. how do you speak I, to that? I think there's a kind of a combination of things. So, you know, on, on the one hand, um, there have never been more languages and sort of diversity out there and, and things for people to choose from. Um, on the other hand, many people find as, you know, they start to experiment with different things, that the things that are tried and true, solid, secure, reliable, performant, um, are actually worth more than ever. Uh, another interesting trend that we've seen a lot of uh, is people writing new languages to run on the JVM. Um, so, you know, that's quite a, a, a neat thing to see happening as well. And then finally, you know, we've been investing in trying to make sure that the technology is, you know, is refreshed, is new, is up to date, um, and not just kind of resting on our laurels of being the most popular platform in the world. Can you give some specific examples of the Java renaissance and growth? I mean, where people are using it. I mean, and be specific, some really key examples. Sure. Um, you know, we've seen uh, a, a lot of companies out there, you know, we're, we're kind of used to the large companies on Wall Street and, and that kind of thing using it, um, as well as people using it to power sort of mission critical things. Um, but, you know, we're also seeing now a lot of startups turning to Java as they get to the point where they actually need to scale, right? So they, they may have experimented with a few other things to try to get something up quickly, but, you know, when they get to the point where they need to make sure that it's going to be solid and, and uh, take them where they need to go, then they move that. So we saw that, you know, recently with uh, Twitter and, and some other uh, companies like that. So it's quite nice. So what's next for the Java platform? Where are you guys investing? I mean, this is a, it's an area that people want to know more about. Obviously, software's eating the world. You've seen software-defined data center. I mean, software defined everything now. Yeah. I mean, software's at the center of the value proposition. Yeah. What's, what are you guys investing in? Well, I, I think there are a couple of things. Um, we're investing heavily in uh, Java in the cloud. Um, because we're seeing a lot of people wanting to use Java in cloud environments. So thinking through the places and the things that we can do to really make that easy. Um, we also are always looking at future hardware trends in order to make sure that the tools that you have available in Java and the way the implementation is done is as good as it can be, not only for the hardware today, but also for the hardware of the future. Um, and we're going to talk about that a bunch in the keynote today. Yeah, so, you know, this show has got a ton of Fortune 500, Fortune 2000, I mean, the, some of the biggest names are here. We're seeing, I mean, we've seen it in the last six months, a lot around Internet of Things, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of that is moving, there's lots of directions, but the Internet of Things around industrial uh, manufacturing, around fleets and so forth. What are you hearing as you talk to those large customers? Because sometimes people think of Java as a, as a heavyweight protocol, sometimes mm -hmm. it's got a large footprint. You start getting into small devices. What, what's that conversation look like for IoT yeah. plus Java? Well, there are really a couple of places there, right? So on the one hand, you have all of these devices. Um, you also have a lot of data that's being created, right? And that data is going to a back end somewhere. Now typically those back ends are already written in Java, right? Um, but it's also very, very useful to be able to do smarter things either at a point where you're aggregating or even all the way on the, on the edge in, in the device itself. 
And there's really no better technology for doing that than Java. Uh, and in fact, there are jo versions of Java that are extremely lightweight and, and work really, really well in those kinds of environments. Yeah, so that, that, that's fantastic. We're, we're starting to see, especially John talked about sort of these newer generations, we're seeing new cloud platforms come along, especially kind of newer middleware. Uh, Java's obviously a huge piece of fusion, yeah. but you know, maybe the next Twitter, the next Airbnb comes along, they're building a lot themselves. Mm -hmm. How do you think about sort of your role as driving the Java platform versus Java in the core Oracle space? Do you, do you look at both sides of that, sort of what's coming new and, and fusion, or do you try and stay focused well, you on know, the Oracle there, Yeah, there's, there's a lot of synergy. I mean, you know, as you can imagine, it's immensely useful uh, for us working on Java SE, yeah. um, having a bunch of groups uh, in the same company uh, that we can talk to and find out about what things work and what they're worried about and you know, what some of their pain points are. Um, it's also, I think, the case that uh, you know, as we're looking forward to people running things in the cloud, whether they be on a, a traditional middleware but run as cloud services, or it's completely new and different cloud services, um, we're seeing that they're choosing Java as, as the technology of choice for, for uh, the underpinning. James Gosling was talking about robots and Raspberry Pi, a lot of innovation, a lot of tinkering. It's a maker yep. culture now. Yep. And uh, one of the things that I've been seeing, certainly within our team and customer bases, is that Java is, has, is interoperating with a lot of these smaller, lightweight languages for the mm -hmm. IoT stuff, like Raspberry Pi and some other things. So, so how do you keep it sexy? How do you keep? How do you win the keep winning the developers' hearts and minds with Java? And at Java One, how do you guys keep it so strong? I mean, every year, every year it's like it's the death of Java. <laughs> I hear it over and over again. Java's, you know, this and that. But it actually works well for our dashboarding. Yeah. It's great for you know heavy lifting coding. Yeah. Is that? How you see it? I mean, and you know, how you guys well, win the hearts and minds of developers? Yeah, so, so what I'd say is, you know, really uh, since Oracle became the steward of Java, we've really been trying to uh, reinvigorate the development of Java itself. So looking at things that people want to do. So as an example, uh, in the Java 8 release, um, we had something called Project Lambda, which allows you to, to write closures in Java, bringing a more functional style of programming. So a lot of these other technologies you're talking about, like people are actually really interested in, you know, getting towards a functional style of programming, you can do that today in Java. Yeah. On the development teams, it's all agile now, right? And so I got I got to ask you, what specifically do you want to lay out at Java One this week? What do you say to the attendees at Java One this week? So we're saying uh, congratulations and thanks for 20 years of Java, and look forward to another 20 years of, of strong technology for the Java SE team. Great, that's awesome. I got to ask you a personal question. You know, I mean, us computer science guys lived in a generation where open source was kind of radical, now it's tier one. Yep. So now the open source thing is so strong, yep. it is a first class citizen. And so software, the world has changed. What have you learned over the years, in the 20 years, looking at the Java evolution? It's importance, obviously, it's historic. We see that, obviously, it's great. But what have you learned, and what's been magnified learnings for you over the past 20 years? And put that in context to the next 20. So I, I would say that uh, you know I, I've learned that it, it is just amazing what a community of developers can achieve, working well together, working transparently, communicating, rolling up their sleeves, and getting things done. Um, I've also learned uh, a lot about the importance of uh, compatibility, things remaining stable, and, and you're knowing that the program that you wrote many, many years ago on an early version of Java still runs today, um, just much, much, much faster. What are the top conversations that you're involved in? I mean, obviously you, you obviously oversee a big part of the business and it's really relevant, obviously, at a developer standpoint. What are the top three conversations you're involved with with developers uh, and customers? So I, I think there's, um, in general, uh, an interest in the things that are coming. And so a lot of the discussion actually is, is about helping people understand what things are out there that they can already find and look at in order to understand what the future looks like. Um, you know, we definitely have people who are interested in um, you know, taking what they've done in the past and moving it to a new environment, whether it be to the cloud or whether it be to a small device, um, there's a lot of interest in that as well. A lot of confusion too around Java and where it fits. We talk, you addressed that, but one of the things I'm super excited about is uh, we interview a lot of folks from women in tech to you know stuff around education, where computer science, where we're passionate about getting it into the core, like math, science, in elementary schools, all the way down to that level. Yep. But certainly at high school, you're seeing Java be the cornerstone yes. of it. So it's not like eat your spinach, you know, programming kind of like it. kids are using it. Here you have over 450 kids at Java One. That's three times um, than more than last year. Kids are digging Java right now, yep. and because of the, you know, what, what, how do you? 
How do you make sense of that? How do you explain that? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons for it. I think one of the main reasons is it's fairly easy to get started with. Um, and, you know, if it's well written, it's pretty easy to understand it. And I think that's a really big part. You know, there are some languages that make things you know, really easy to create, but then they become, become sort of a, an unmaintainable soup. Um, thankfully, you know, Java encourages people to write things in a way that uh, that's actually, you know, usually pretty easy to understand if you're coming across it the first time. And yeah, we were just at the Grace Hopper event uh, in Houston uh, for women in computing. It's interesting they have the one hour coding, and I was talking to one of the, uh, the professors. They're like, hey, you know what? These kids these days, it's not about being a geek nerd or dork, they don't even use those terms anymore because everyone's programming now. People from football players down to cheerleaders to everybody's now yep. co interested in coding. Maybe because of the gamification, but it's computers are cool. Yes. Right? Software is very cool now, so so it's just great for me because when I was doing software, it was not it as was cool not as it is today. As cool, was it? Um, <laughs> so what's the coolest thing that you've seen? Obviously the kids is impressive, the 450 kids. What is the coolest thing you've seen? Um, well, I'll tell you, I just thought it was super cool yesterday with all of the kids um, in this program, you know, going through classes, they gave up, you know, an entire Saturday to sit inside. Um, and one of the neatest things about that was it wasn't only kids coming and getting taught by adults. There were a bunch of sessions where kids who had gone through the program last year came back and gave the courses. And I think that's pretty tremendous. Yeah, I think it's a total renaissance. I think it's, like, it's going to be a very interesting 20 years. What's your view of the next 20? What do you, I mean, just for, shoot the arrow forward. I mean, not, don't put the Oracle hat on. Put your <laughs> personal hat on, Yeah, so we don't get in trouble. What's I, your, I think no. the whole world is going to be writing Java. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Java, obviously great, great heavy, heavy lifting tool. It's really, you know, really amazing stuff. So again, continuing, but also integrating with a lot of the, the, the other stuff like Node, real time. I mean, how's that, how's that all going to jive together? How do you see that coming together? Well, I, I think that some of the trends we've seen with uh, Polyglot are going to continue, right? People are sort of at the point where they understand that they're not necessarily going to have one language that does everything they need. They're going to have kind of a mix. Um, and so it's, it's really going to be important for these languages to kind of work well together and for people to be able to sort of master different styles that are appropriate for different things that they're doing. So final question, what's your plans for this week? Obviously we're kicking off, it's Sunday here, it's beautiful out in San Francisco, it's no rain, it's gorgeous. What's your plans? And what's the bumper sticker for this show? So two questions. What's your plans this week? What are you going to do? Break it down for us. And then okay. to put a bumper sticker on this show in advance so people can get a feel for what's going to happen. Well, let's say got back-to-back -back meetings lined up just about every day. Uh, I'm going to be meeting with a lot of uh, customers. I'm going to be meeting with uh, a lot of developers. Um, it actually uh, started for me already early this morning with the breakfast uh, with the uh, Java user group leaders and, and the Java champions. Are people pumped? They are super excited about it. And uh, the bumper sticker so for the show this week is cloud, all about cloud? Uh, it's it's going to be Java in the Java cloud. How about that? Java in the cloud, that's the bumper sticker. Okay, we're live here on Howard Street. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Uh, for, you know, for more, we're podcasting. Go to siliconangle.tv. Every Wednesday, we feature a Women in Wednesday on siliconangle.tv. And of course, we have guest of the week, our favorite interview, as voted by the crowd and our editors at SiliconANGLE. We keep on the cube. We'll vote for our guest of the week. That's a dedicated podcast. So go to siliconangle.tv for that. We'll be right back. More live here at Oracle Open World and Java One here on Sunday after this short break.